Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Young Justice is back for the second half of its season, now streaming on DC Universe. The first half of the season has been recapped, so check the playlist for that if you need to catch up. DC Universe dropped three episodes today, as they will every Tuesday until the end of the season. So let's jump in and see what's happening. The first episode back begins on Thanagard with the Justice League investigating a crime scene where some rare materials have been stolen. Guy Gardner has found a lead in the mystery, finding a trail from one of the boom tubes. Back on Earth, the Young Justice crew, including Terra, are on the beach for a meeting. Dick offers the Younger Gang membership with the team. They tell him that this job comes with the possibility of sacrifice. The media backlash is in full force from the League discovering Granny Good in this organization. She's on the news saying the VR goggles were not her fault. Someone within the company did this, but that's been taken care of. Beast Boy watches all of this and then stops a purse stealer, but manages to go viral thanks to social media. Granny Goodness loves that he's trending, but he tells her to leave him alone. Back in space, the League discovers a huge ship. At the Watchtower, Magan welcomes the younger group into the League. When something is mentioned about having more females in the League, Halo questions her gender. She doesn't identify really as male or female, considering her soul is from a mother box. Beast Boy arrives and tells the team about the involvement with Granny Goodness. Magan tells him that he's welcome on their team and they could always use more help. They get a notification about more news breaking. This time it's Donna Troy asking for help in restoring the Hall of Justice, and she accuses Lex Luthor for the red tape they're running into. Back in space, the League comes closer to the ship they saw, and we see inside that Granny Goodness is there tormenting Big Barda. Granny is punishing her for her own good, she says. In Star City, Terra records a conversation about Cyborg and sends it to Deathstroke. In space, the League battles it out on board Granny's ship. Superman, Wonder Woman, and Hawkgirl get into the ship and discover all the missing metas. The Furies attack, including Barda. Granny uses this distraction to try and contain them, but they escape. They head towards Granny, but she uses a device to send them out into space. They can't breathe, and Guy saves them with his ring. Now, I'm not for certain, but isn't it pretty canon that Superman doesn't need to breathe or can breathe in space? We've all seen him flying through space before in other shows, right? In the second episode, Beast Boy's having trouble on set of his television show thanks to Granny Goodness. He wants to quit, but the director tells him he'd be in breach of contract and Granny would sue him for everything he has. He shows up to the Watchtower after 52 takes of the same scene. He's called to the team for a covert mission to Russia at a place called the 52 Base. I'm sensing a trend here with the number 52, which we all know is a DC thing. The team head to Russia in their lovely winter costumes, and Brion and Tara get them into the facility from below. Artemis calls off the mission though once they overhear that the people there are volunteering, not held against their will. As they leave, they discover several vic villains outside the facility waiting to attack. Black Manta, Gorilla Grood, and Boomerang. The two teams prepare to battle as the Red Brigade, the super soldiers from the facility, enter in to break things up. Halo has a flashback when confronted with Boomerang and freezes up. He tosses a weapon at her and stabs her in the chest. Now I'm not sure if it killed her or what really happened, but Brion pulls the weapon out of her chest and she recovers. Once the Red Brigade completes arrives, Artemis calls for a boom tube, but Halo isn't able to produce one yet. The villains want to retreat, but it appears that Amanda Waller is controlling them as part of the Suicide Squad and tells them they cannot. She orders them to take out the Red Brigade at all costs. Halo shields the group from attack until Forager can bring in the ship, and the Red Brigade assists the team and in the end, they're able to fight off the villains. Artemis pleads with the Brigade, though, to let them take the villains back to Bell Reeve. At Bell Reeve, Amanda Waller blackmails Calderon into keeping her secret about Task Force X. Though, by saying if he tells the world about them, she'll expose the Justice League's covert ops team. Halo has another flashback to her previous life where it's revealed that the body she inhabits, Gabrielle, was paid off to open the door to the assassins that killed Brion's parents. In the third episode, it appears to be Thanksgiving, and the various groups are preparing their meals. Artemis and Will continue their series of meaningful looks, and I think it probably won't be long before they're a couple, and honestly, I kind of enjoy their family dynamic. Meanwhile, at the Meta Youth Thanksgiving Festival, Count Vertigo attacks and kidnaps Beast Boy's girlfriend, Perdita. The group takes off after them to rescue her. Back in Star City, it's accidentally revealed to Artemis's mother that she's still working with the team. She's outraged at this and tells Artemis that she had a chance at a normal life. She tells her that it's too risky, and 
and look what it's done to her and Barbara, referencing the wheelchairs. She also brings up the looks between Artemis and Will and tells her that the little girl needs a mother. The other team comes face to face with what they think is Count Vertigo, but it turns out to be a trick and it's actually Simon in devastation. They find out that Perdita's kidnapping was just a distraction so that the teens at the Meta Youth Center could be captured. They return to the Youth Center just in time to take on the kidnappers. Halo has a little freak out during Thanksgiving dinner and she runs outside. She tells the doctor about how Gabrielle betrayed the royal family and she begs her not to tell Brion or Tara even though it wasn't actually her who did this. The doctor promises to keep her secret but then makes a call to someone who we don't hear and asks for their help. The episode ends and that brings us to the end of this recap. I'm so glad this show's back and I really hope it's a satisfying conclusion to the season. If you've enjoyed the video be sure and give it a big thumbs up and I'll see you again next week.